everyone, welcome to my channel Notes from the Sewing Room. My name is Becky, thanks for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing, so if that's something that interests you, then please do stick with me. So today's video is all about what I made during the month of June. I've got a few different things to show you today, including a few bits that I've made myself, and I've got a few uh, bits of children's clothing to show you as well that I've made for my little boy. So let's get to it and I'll tell you all about it. Also, for those of you who are interested, today I'm wearing one of my Sew Over It Betty dresses, which is one of my favourite dresses. And to be honest, I made this for a wedding, not last year, the year before, and I've not had a chance to wear it again since because I was kind of keeping it for best, if you know what I mean. But I just thought to myself, why keep it for best? I should just wear it all the time. So that's what I decided to do today. I've just been wearing it out and about. And do you know what? It has felt lovely. If you've not tried the Betty dress pattern before by Sew Over It, I definitely recommend it. This version, if I just hold up the skirt, has got a beautiful circle skirt and it's just so nice and you just feel like you can swish around in it and it's just really really lovely so yeah that's what i'm wearing today in case any of you are interested everything by the way that i do mention in today's video just the same as all of my videos i will link down in the description box below that includes the fabrics that i mention um if they are still available or at least the places that i got them from and also any uh, patterns that I mention as well. So the first pattern and the first make that I wanted to share with you is actually something that I've wanted to make for a while. And it's actually from a free dress pattern that I found online. It was actually recommended to me by a friend and I'm really pleased that I had a go at trying it. The dress I'm talking about is the All A Dress by French Navy Patterns. And yeah, it's lovely. I. I'm pleased I had a go with it. I will say though, I've graded between a few different sizes, which I shall tell you about in a second. And I did find the sizing on this pattern a little bit tricky because I wasn't sure exactly what size to make. And because of that, I've now got some little alterations to make, but it's kind of fine as it is, but I think it would be even better if I just make those little tweaks. So I will go on to do that, but I have actually been wearing it in the size and kind of shape and everything that it is at the moment. So let me show it to you. And I'm gonna put in some pictures, hopefully, of me wearing this dress as well, so you can see it on. So this is the dress here. I've made it in this beautiful um, viscose fabric. If I just hold that up, you can see it. This I bought from Sew so Wardrobe and I yeah, it's lovely fabric, really nice to work with. It's got a fair amount of drape to it, if you can see that in the skirt there. The fabric washed really well. There was no fading or anything like that that I noticed particularly. And it feels really nice against my skin also when I'm wearing it. So um, the French Navy dress um, here is actually, uh, the all the dress should I say, is really simple to make. It, all it's got is some waist darts just down the front section here. It's got these lovely kind of cap sleeves, which have got a slight gather, or it's in the pattern it says ease, I think, just around the top shoulder. I found that I'd cut the um, arm, arms just slightly higher on the shoulder, which was actually deliberate. So rather than actually adding in a gather around the top shoulder there, I added in a slight pleat. So you probably can't see it very well on there, but just a very small pleat at the top shoulder, which to be honest, I prefer sometimes rather than doing a gather. So that's what I did there. I finished off the back with an invisible zip. I managed to make this dress out of just a meter and a half of fabric, but I did have to do some little bits of kind of maneuvering, should I say, when I was actually cutting out the pattern pieces. And one of the things that I did was actually ended up cutting the sleeve on a slight diagonal rather than on the straight grain of the fabric. And that was literally because I didn't have enough fabric to fit it in basically otherwise. But that's worked absolutely fine. There's, there's no drama there. And I think because of the, the, the hearts running in all directions, it didn't really matter which way I, I cut the, uh, the fabric to be honest too much, so it was fine. The neckline is finished with a bias binding, which makes it really simple and easy to do. There's no faffing around with the facing or anything like that. I decided to use a bias binding, a lovely thin bias binding, which is really lovely weight, which I got from the Specky Seamstress. So if we just hold that up there, hopefully you can see it. So that's the one with the planet designs on. I've used that one before, really, really liked it. So I ordered some more. So um, that's how I finished that bit. But apart from that, I finished the hem and the um, the sleeve hems, the sleeves, should I say, um, by literally just turning up the fabric a couple of times and then top stitching it. So that worked out fine. So what changes did I make to the pattern? So 
If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I'm quite a tall person. I'm five foot ten. So this pattern, I believe, is drafted for someone who is slightly um, smaller than myself. So I decided that I was going to add a, a centimetre and a half onto the bodice, which seems to have worked out quite well for me. I have got quite a long body and I don't like things to come too high ordinarily, unless that's, you know, the, the style that it is, I guess. So I decided to add a centimetre and a half onto the bodice here, which I think worked well for me. I also added on an inch to the hem as well, um, which again, I think it made it quite a good length for me. It's meant that it's kind of around about my knee now rather than being a little bit shorter than that. I did do quite a small um, hem take up on the bottom of the skirt. I literally overlocked the bottom and then turned it on itself twice to get a nice finish. So it's not a thick hem that I've got on there at all, but it's kind of worked out, you know, the best length for me, should I say. So how did I make it in terms of sizing? Well, as I said, I found it a little bit on the confusing side, so I wasn't sure with the ease that was involved in the dress. I know it's supposed to be quite a loose fitting dress. So I wasn't sure which size to actually go for. So I decided to go for a bit of a mixture. But if I made it again, I know now that I would need to make a size small on the bodice and then um, I can grade out from the bodice um, into, I could probably get away with the medium, but I actually used the size large on the skirt at the bottom. So let me tell you about the sizing. So in the end, I made the bodice in a size small at the top here, down to just below my bust. And then from there down to the hip, I actually graded that out to a size medium. And then because it's a gathered skirt and it doesn't really matter about an exact fit onto the bodice, I actually used the size large skirt pattern pieces because I was a little bit worried that it was going to be too tight and I, I do like quite a full skirt so I think the size large skirt works fine although I probably could have got away with the medium. So this pattern is actually available in a size extra small through to an extra large. If you are making size extra small that's a UK size 8 and if you are making the extra large that's a UK size 16. The bust measurement for the extra small is 81 centimetres and the hip measurement is 87 centimetres and if you are making Making the extra large, the bust measurement is 97 centimetres and the hip measurement is 103 centimetres. Now my body measurements are actually a 32 bust, 28 waist and a 40 hip. So I actually fell in between a few of the different sizes on the pattern pack and that's why I I decided to kind of braid between the different sizes and you know it did work quite well but what I have found is that because I graded out to a size medium around about the hip area uh, on the bodice I found that it has got quite a lot of ease in there and then from my point of view it's a little bit too much but obviously it's personal preference and it depends on how much ease you like in your dresses and your garments and whatnot. So I've decided that I am probably going to take in those side seams on my bodice by probably another five, uh, 1.5 centimetres on each side, just because I have got a little bit too much wiggle room in there for my liking at the moment. I do quite like the skirt in uh, the size large, so I think I will keep that as it is. Because it's gathered, it really doesn't matter, um, you know, as I said, about an exact fit onto the bodice. So, but overall, I'm really happy with the dress. It wasn't too time consuming to make. I um, made it over the course of a week, if I'm honest, doing kind of 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, etc. That's just the way that I get to do my sewing these days, having a small baby. But I'm really pleased with it and um, there, there wasn't too many fiddly bits. And I think if you are fairly new to sewing, then it is definitely a dress project that you would be absolutely fine with. And of course, if you are a more experienced sewist, then you'd be absolutely fine with this and it would be really straightforward to have a go at. But as this is a free dress pattern, if you haven't tried it, I would definitely recommend it. I think it's perfect for summer, perfect to be made up in a viscose or a rayon or maybe even a lightweight cotton poplin fabric, something like that. But I'm really pleased with mine and I think I'm going to get quite a lot of wear out of it. I actually managed to finish it in time for a little trip that I've just been on with my family um, here in the UK. So um, I was wearing it a couple of times during the time that we were away and yeah, I just, I just felt really nice in it. So, um, but I, I did think when I was wearing it that, that, like I said, there was a little bit too much um, ease in it for my liking. So I am going to take the time to unpick it and 
yeah, taking those side seams a little bit. If you've made any of the garments that I do mention in today's video, I'd love to know how you found it and or how you found them, should I say, um, you know, um, what fabrics you use, any tips you've got for me for the future. So do feel free to leave me any comments below. And also if you've got any questions for me as well, I do I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. So that would be amazing if you did want to get in touch. The next project that I wanted to talk to you about is a top that I've also wanted to make for quite a long time. And I'm just really pleased that I had a go at it because I've really enjoyed making it. And that is the Friday Pattern Company Sagebrush Top. I've trawled Instagram lots of times looking at different people's versions and there's so many lovely versions around. So I'm pleased that I actually decided to add it on to my to sew list and basically get on with it. So I made my version in a lovely cotton lawn fabric, which is here. Um, so as you can see, it's got a lovely flower print on there, which I think is a little bit vintage looking, which I really like. This is actually a really lightweight cotton lawn fabric, probably one of the lightest weight cotton lawns that I've actually used. It's really soft. Um, it's not see-through, but um, you can kind of, I don't know, it's not see-through, but you can kind of see, if you were looking closely, my hand through the fabric, but you'd have to be looking really closely, but it's not completely see-through, if that makes sense. There's lots of lovely details involved in the sagebrush top, if you are unfamiliar with it. So, but I'm sure you've probably seen it around because so many people have made it now. It's got these gorgeous puff sleeves, um, which have got a gather in the top of the sleeve here. And then they're finished off with an elastic just around the um, bottom of the arm section. The back is finished with a lovely little bow detail, which is basically the bias binding continued around the neckline and then it finishes at, at the back basically creating that lovely bow. I think if I was to make it again I'm probably going to extend the bias binding so that I get a bigger bow at the back of the top. I think I'd probably prefer that and if I'm honest I'd probably prefer to drop the neckline just very very slightly so that it's not so high on my collarbones here but um, I am pleased with it and I have been wearing it and yeah, again, it's really nice to wear with, with skirts and that kind of thing. I will put in a little bit of video of me having a little bit of fun um, with my umbrella when I was out and about the other day. I got my husband to uh, film a little bit of video of me. It was basically raining and we were kind of like hanging out in the car before we went for our walk. So I said, right, let's just get out of the car and I got my umbrella out and I was just twirling around basically being a bit silly, uh, wearing my new top and um, one of my uh, favourite denim skirts as well. So I think um, a few people walked past and they were like, what are you doing kind of thing? But um, I had a little bit of fun anyway doing that. So I will put in a little bit of footage of me um, twirling about. Um, so also one of the other details here is the ruffle which goes along the front here. And um, yeah, it's the first time I've ever made a ruffle. I've seen a lot of them around in shop bought clothes as well as um, sewing patterns that you can make as well. And I'm sure it's not gonna be the last ruffle that I make because I think I'm definitely sold on it. And it wasn't as difficult as I kind of anticipated that it was gonna be. And I really like the look of it when my top is actually on as well. So yeah, I decided to make this top in a size small, which I think works quite well for me. The top is actually available in a size extra small through to a 7X as well, um, which, which is great. But um, the size small seemed to work quite well for me. Um, it is quite a boxy top compared to what I usually make and usually wear, to be honest. I do tend to like things that are a little bit more um, closely fitted. But this actually works really well and it, it looks really nice tucked into a skirt. I think it would also work really well with jeans or maybe some other kind of worky type trousers perhaps as well. Um, I'm not, I don't tend to be someone that wears a lot of trousers. Um, I think just because I've probably not found the right fit of trousers for me. I have got some jeans, but I don't tend to wear them very much. I'm more of a kind of skirts and dresses type of person. That's why I know that the top works quite well tucked into a skirt. I did find that the overall length of the top was a little bit too long for me. Um, I did actually mention that in another video that I, I did, uh, which was all about my favourite tops for summer. So I will um, link that below if you are interested. And this was actually one of my favourite tops for summer. Um, but I did mention that it did actually come up a little bit long. So I decided to cut three inches off the bottom of my top and that actually worked out a better length for me. But someone mentioned in the comments section that it's designed to have a thicker hem at the bottom, which I basically didn't do. So I probably just missed that bit in the pattern instructions. 
Um, but um, overall, I'm really pleased with it. And to be honest, I, I quite like it having a narrow hem on there. Um, so I probably would take the three inches off again next time on the bottom of the top. But I really enjoyed making this and I have got plans to make another one. I have also been thinking about how I could hack this into a dress project. So if you've got any ideas about how I could hack this into a dress, obviously not this particular version, but in another fabric, then I'd love to hear your ideas. So I've, I've been thinking, oh, can I do it with a pleated skirt? Can I do it with a gathered skirt? Would I be better to make a top and then a skirt and wear them together, perhaps made out of the same fabric? I'm not sure, but if you've got any thoughts on that, then I'd, I'd love to know. But overall, I'm really pleased with this top. My favorite details are the ruffle and the lovely sleeve detail. Um, I think this pub is probably one of the only tops that I've got that's also got an elastic finish around the arm there. And um, again, that seemed to work quite well for me. So overall, I would really recommend making the sagebush top. And it's kind of encouraged me to have a look at other patterns that are available um, by the Friday Pattern Company. The only other one of their patterns I've made so far was the square neck top. And I've had a go at making that in both a woven and also a jersey fabric as well. But I am interested in making a couple of their other dress patterns now as well. So watch this space and you never know, I might have a go at making those in, in the not too distant future. But this is my sagebrush top. And um, I forgot to mention that this fabric was actually given to me by Minerva. I'm part of their brand ambassador team. So they gave me this fabric for free. So keep an eye on on the Minerva website if you're interested and my review will be going up there at some point soon. The next project that I wanted to share with you that I made during the month of June was one that's been really really popular and that is the new pattern by Tilly and the Buttons and that is the Lyra dress. So here it is if you are unfamiliar with this pattern. Again I'm sure you've seen it around because lots and lots of people have made it and um, that um, you know, I found online. So, and I'm sure um, you've probably seen it in, if you do watch other sewing vloggers like myself, um, quite a, a, a lot of other people have made it as well. And there have been some gorgeous versions, which to be honest is the inspiration that I had to have a go at making it myself. So there are a couple of different versions that you could make of this dress, if you can see the line drawings just on the back there. So you can have a go at doing the shorter version, or you can have a go at doing the tiered skirt with the ruffle on the bottom. So I decided to have a go at doing the shorter version, and I'm really pleased with the overall effect of the shorter version. I've actually not made any skirts with that kind of tiered ruffle effect, but I definitely would like to have a go at some point. I just haven't had a chance to get around to doing it as yet. So um, in the pattern pack that I have here, um, I decided to um, go for the Tilling the Button size two overall. So that's including the bodice and the skirt. So it's actually sizing down compared to what I usually make in a Tilly and the Buttons pattern. And that's basically because there's quite a lot of ease involved in this dress. So the finished garment measurements for the size two that I made are 37 inches for the bust, 34 and a half, in, or 34 and a quarter inches, should I say, for the waist, and 56 and a quarter inches for the hip. So that's actually um, bigger than my actual body measurements. So I thought, yes, I'm gonna go for that. And the only problem that I found with making the size two, it's absolutely fine everywhere. I think I've achieved a really good fit. It's just slightly pulled just across this section here. So it's not across the actual bust, it's more that kind of upper chest area, which has never happened to me before. So I'm not really sure what happened there, but if I was to make the Lyra again, I would probably just maybe size up on the bodice. I'm not sure, but overall, I'm really, really pleased with, uh, with the fit. So. I don't know, like maybe, I'd, maybe I wouldn't bother because I, I, I do like my dress as it is at the moment. It's just that it is slightly more fitted across that, that section than I'd probably like it to be. Um, but yeah, I like that this pattern has got a lot of um, versatile features. You can change the different sleeve lengths. You've got the different skirt lengths that you can make. You can have a go at doing a tie belt, or of course you could make a different kind of belt like I have, which I'll show you in just a second. By the way, I have actually recorded a video, which is a, a full review of how I found making the Lyra dress. So I will link that down in my description box below if you are interested in having a look at that. Myself and Sally from The Secret Life of the Seamstress both made the Lyra dress 
We both made it in different fabrics and uh, we made different styles of the dress as well. And uh, we came together to do uh, two different vlogs actually on that. So, um, but yeah, do check out Sally's video if you haven't seen it already, because her dress is beautiful. So yeah, I really enjoyed working with Sally on that video and I really enjoyed making my dress as well. I mean, the time consuming bits about um, this particular project were doing the collar. But this was the first time that I've actually had to go at doing um, a collar with a stand. It wasn't as complicated as I thought it was going to be. It did take a lot of pinning and I really did take my time with it because I just basically didn't want to mess it up. And I followed the instructions in um, the, the, the handy booklet, of course, that came with the pattern. But I also used the Tilly and the Buttons Rosa pattern um, for a little bit of help as well, because I just wanted to compare what it said about doing the stand up collar for that pattern, as well as this pattern. Now I do have the Rosa dress pattern myself, but I haven't actually had a go at making it yet. It's one of those that I bought that I just haven't got round to, but it's on my to sew list for, you know, another day basically. But um, it was helpful for me having a look at both sets of instructions and then putting together the collar. Um, as I said, I really took my time and I, I did get a little bit confused about which sections, sections of the collar needed interfacing and which sections didn't. So I would say, you know, take your time on that if you haven't had a go at it already. I would say that because I used a viscose fabric, my material did move around quite a lot on my sewing machine. And because of that, if I was to use the same type of fabric again, I would possibly consider interfacing with a lightweight interfacing all of my pattern pieces for the collar that might work a little bit better. But um, apart from that, I, you know, everything was quite straightforward. I decided to, I had a bit of a drama with doing my buttonholes down the front of my dress. I was planning on using some buttons, which were from a cardigan, which had actually got ruined uh, with hair dye, believe it or not. Um, so I didn't want to throw away the buttons. I am a bit of a button hoarder. Any like shirts and stuff that my husband's getting rid of, I'm like, oh, I have those buttons. I'll put them in my little button pot because I always think they'll come in for something. So I cut the buttons off of my cardigan thinking they'll be perfect for my Lyra dress. I actually measured them on um, a kind of sample buttonhole that I did before I actually stitched my buttonholes on my dress. And I thought, yes, that's going to be amazing. What I didn't do was I didn't, on my sample piece of fabric, I didn't add in interfacing on there. And I don't know, that was just a big fail really because my buttons then didn't fit through my holes on my actual dress. So then I had to go hunting through my button box to try and find some more, but it all worked out fine in the end. And I had some perfect little orange buttons in heart shapes. So um, I'm really pleased with that. So you have to excuse my dress because it is a little bit creased. I am going to put in some video footage also of me wearing this dress so that you can get a little bit more of a closer up look of the fit and whatnot and also the belt detail that I've done. So this is my dress here. I bought this fabric from Minerva after seeing it on the Great British Sewing Bee. I just loved the, the pop of the green on this lovely navy background and these other kind of lovely colours um, on the flowers here as well. So um, as I said, I made the short sleeve version here. Um, how close you can see it. So I don't think my collar is absolutely perfect, but you know, it's good enough for me. And if you were to look too closely, I think there are probably a few lumpy bumpy bits on the underside of the collar, but I really don't care. It's one of those things where I think life's too short. You know, a few years ago when I first started sewing, I would have taken the time to unpick it and, you know, probably giving myself a little bit of headache about, you know, getting it to be absolutely perfect. But now I just think, I'm happy with it. So that's the main thing. I'm the one that's going to be wearing the dress. So, but yeah, so this is uh, the lovely collar here. As you can see, I've got the collar stand on the inside there. I decided not to do the buttons all the way up to the top here because basically I knew that I was never going to wear the dress closed all the way to the top here. Um, so I decided to start my buttons um, just a little bit further down there. And then I've added in four different heart buttons going down at the project there. If I just hold that a little bit closer, hopefully you can see my lovely little heart buttons that I've used. I decided to add just an inch onto the skirt length. I thought that worked quite well for me. It comes to around about my knee area now, which uh, is quite a good length on me, I think. Um, I decided to make a little belt for my dress. 
which uh, was different to the one that's included in the pattern piece. So literally I um, used some scrap pieces of fabric that I had left over from my dress project. I did have to patch them together so that I'd got enough to make a belt. I used the pattern piece from the pattern pack and then extended it by another half of that pattern piece. Um, then I folded the fabric kind of in on itself, um, created a double layer and then turned under the kind of hem section, then top stitched it all the way around to create a really narrow belt there. Um, and then I added on that lovely kind of plastic buckle, which I bought from a local shop to me. Um, unfortunately, they're not online, so I can't link them below. Um, but I did also managed to pick up some buckles like that from my local market. So it's definitely worth a look if you have got a kind of fabric, kind of haberdashery type stall on your local market. Otherwise, maybe check out eBay or Etsy or somewhere like that. I'm sure um, there'll be lots of plastic buckles around that you could use for, for your project if you were interested. Um, I also decided to make my own belt loops, which go on the side of the dress, if you can see those there. Um, yeah, I know that it tells you how to make belt loops in the pattern pack, but I decided to do my own thing and just make them slightly more chunky to hold my, my um, belt in place. But overall, as I said, I'm really happy with this project. I liked that Tilly um, guides you through the whole project as normal as she does in all of her projects. Um, but she basically gets you to finish the bodice first and then add on the skirt, which I really liked because then you've got all your complicated bits finished and then you just, you've got your gathered skirt to add on. So I, I really like that part of the, the instructions. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my Lyra dress and I'm really pleased with it. So I would recommend having a go. If you haven't tried doing a collar and collar stand before, um, you know, give it a go. I thought it was gonna be really difficult, but actually if you do kind of take your time and follow the instructions step by step, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, if you are new to sewing uh, dresses or new to sewing, collars in particular then I would probably say don't use a viscose fabric like I did use something that's a little bit more sturdy maybe um a linen or maybe a cotton poplin fabric or something like that even a quilting cotton would probably work fine or a chambray perhaps it would just have a little bit more stability on the sewing machine and it would save it just from wriggling around a little bit you know more than you'd like it to mine wriggled around quite a lot and um, yeah, it was it was a bit of a, a nuisance at times, but I got there in the end and yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I've worn it out and about a few times and um, you know, it's kind of made me think now I've been wearing it that I would like to make another one. I did say when I first made it that it was quite time consuming, particularly with the collar for me. So I was probably gonna leave it a little bit of time before making another one and I probably still will, but I have liked wearing it more than I probably initially thought, if that makes any sense. So, but yeah, another project that I've enjoyed this month um, and yeah, why not give it a go if you haven't tried it already? The other two things that I made this month were a couple of things for my little boy, William. So William is nine months old now and I've only really just discovered making children's clothes and I'm loving it because it means that I can use some scrap pieces of fabric and it means they're not going to waste. And also I just love seeing him in things that I've made for him. So the first thing that I made is actually a pattern that I've tried before and that is the Poppy and Jazz pattern called the Strawberry Sweatshirt. So I decided to make this as part of a sewing challenge that was going on on Instagram that was being held by Sew Joey and that was Sew a T-shirt for summer. So this is the lovely little jumper that I've made for William. Now this has actually been washed, but I'm gonna have to buy some vanish or something like that for, the, for my washing machine because I've got a little bit of a tomato -y stain on the here uh, neck band there, so do excuse that, but he likes kind of tomato -y based foods and they seem to just go everywhere. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of staining going on in our house at the moment, but I decided to use this, an off cut of this Ponte Roma fabric for the arm pieces and also the bodice. I made this in the size six to nine months and I decided to do the cuffs, as you can see, the hem and also the, um, the neckband all out of a cotton jersey fabric, which I'd got that I bought from Sew Wardrobe and um, the pop, 
the, um, not the poplin, the um, Ponty fabric was left over, as I said, from a project that I'd made before, and I believe I bought that from Cloth Spot. But um, they're both really nice quality fabrics, and I've, I've really enjoyed working with both of them. I have got some of the cloud fabric, um, which I've used for um, the grey sections of the jumper here, left over, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use the rest of that fabric for. So if you've got any ideas, let me know. I haven't got too much. I've probably got about a metre left, maybe something like that. So maybe I might make William another little t-shirt or some little trousers or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to have a think about it. But if you haven't tried the strawberry sweatshirt pattern, I definitely recommend it. It's got quite a nice age range on there. Um, I believe it goes from newborn through to about age six, um, which is great. And it just means that you've got, you know, loads of, you know, making in there that you can do. So I think as William grows, it means that I can just keep tracing out the pattern again and again and again. And, you know, I can make lots of different jumpers in lots of different styles. But he looks so cute in this. I will put in a picture or two of him actually wearing it. And um, if I can find it, I took a picture of him um, the other day, which was when he was crawling around in the sand when we went to the beach and he's got sand all over him. Uh, but he was wearing this little jumper because it wasn't actually you know, amazingly warm on that day. But you know what it's like, you go to the beach because it's it's just a nice sort of family activity to do, isn't it? But he loved being in the sand. Um, so this jumper did actually get absolutely covered in, you know, um, sandiness, but um, it doesn't matter, it's washed absolutely fine. So, but yeah, the strawberry sweatshirt is a really quick make and it's just perfect for kids because he can, you know, he's not quite crawling actually yet. He's, he's trying to crawl, but he loves, He's into everything, you know, he's touching everything. Like I said, he's getting his food down him. He's kind of constantly reaching for stuff. So this kind of jumper is just absolutely perfect. And um, I think uh, when he starts nursery as well, this kind of jumper is just gonna be super practical. Um, and it's gonna go with a lot of his little trousers and that kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I would recommend the strawberry pattern if you haven't used it. Um, I made this for literally about an hour. Um, I made it all on my overlocker, but of course you could make it on your sewing machine if you preferred. So that's that one. Now, the final thing that I wanted to share with you today is um, a pattern that was given to me by a, a company called Pattern Paper Scissors, and they make um, a, a lovely range of children's wear patterns. And this is the pattern that they gave to me and that I've made and I loved it. This is the Avery romper and it's basically a romper suit or a kind of a set of dungarees that are made in a jersey fabric or designed to be made in a jersey fabric. And um, it's just, it's really nice. It's a kind of super kind of comfortable little outfit that can be worn with or without a t-shirt underneath or with or without a vest, whatever. Um, I've had William in this with a long sleeve vest underneath and a little t-shirt underneath. But, um, you know, if you, if it was a warm day, he could probably wear it with nothing underneath as well if he, if he wanted to, um, you know, if he was just kind of in his walker in the house and that kind of thing. So this is actually available in um, zero to three months through to 18 months to 24 months. And I decided to make this in the six to 12 month side, size for William and it's perfect. Now there are a couple of different versions of the romper that you can actually make. You can make it with elastic around the ankle or you can make it with a cuff around the ankle. I decided to go for the cuff version just because I preferred that on, on him. Um, this came together so quickly. Um, I'd say that the most complicated part is actually doing the top stitching, which is basically around the straps and also around the kind of top and the back detailing. So um, again, I'm gonna put in some pictures of William actually wearing this little romper suit so you can get a bit of an idea of what it looks like on. If I can find it again, there's a lovely picture of him uh, with his little toy dinosaur, which just looks so cute. So um, hopefully you enjoy seeing that little picture. But here is the little romper suit. So I decided to use this meerkat fabric, which I bought from eBay a while ago. So you may have seen this in one of my previous fabric haul videos, but um, I decided to, rather than using my twin needle to do the finishing on this, I just used my zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. I made, I made the main part of the dungarees on my overlocker, and then I literally just went onto my sewing machine to do all the top stitching. So that's basically just around the top there, um, the straps, um, you, I zigzagged all along the straps and then you attach them at the back there as well. So um, 
yeah, he's had quite a lot of wear out of this little romper suit already. And I've got some rocket beam fabric, which I'm gonna show in one of my um, next videos, uh, which will be a kind of fabric haul type video coming soon. Um, so yeah, I'll show you that then. But I think a little romper suit like this made in rocket fabric is gonna be really lovely and he's just gonna look super cute. So, um, but I would I would recommend this as a, as a project to try. Now it is actually, according to the instructions, um, an intermediate rated pattern. Now I think that's probably because the amount of top stitching that's involved. Um, the, the pattern pieces, um, you know, come together quite well. The instructions are really nice. There's some pictures in there as well as, um, you know, the written words of telling you how to actually um, put together the garment. So I think if you have made um, a couple of garments before, you'd probably be absolutely fine with this, but you just need to take your time, I guess, in doing um, the top stitching. But um, it's a lovely little pattern and they've got some really um, nice other patterns as well available on um, their websites, I think, as um, PDFs and also as paper patterns like I've got at the moment. Um, but um, it says that it's um, to be made in a stretchy fabric, a jersey in knit, a cotton elastine, um, fabric that stretches out by 10 to 20 percent it suggests here anyway so anyway um I use a cotton jersey that worked really well so I would probably use a cotton jersey again in the future for my next Avery romper suit for William but again I think I can keep tracing this out again and again and again as he gets bigger and you know it just makes a lovely little suit for him to play in and um, I think you could probably hack this quite easily into a little short suit as well if you just cut it off at the knees or slightly higher so um, yeah, that's food for thought. I might try that one in the future. Um, but that's all of my projects that I've got to show you that I made during the month of June. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing and learning about what, what I've been up to. If you have got any comments, then do leave me a, a, you know, a, a message below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have enjoyed watching today's video, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up because that encourages um, YouTube to um, show my video to other people who are interested in sewing as well. Um, thank you to everyone, of course, who um, does join me each week for my videos. I do tend to put videos out on a Monday and um, family life um, allowing me to, uh, but if not, it's normally a Tuesday, but I do tend to try and put them up on a Monday or a Tuesday. If you do subscribe to my channel already, thank you very much. But if you don't subscribe already, already it would be great if you could consider subscribing and pressing that notification bell because then you won't miss any of my future videos but until next time I'll leave it there and say thank you so much for joining me today it's been lovely to have you with me and I'll see you soon bye <laughs>